And welcome everybody to part 45 of the Pokemon Gold walkthrough where we are going to be taking on yet once again, you guessed it, another gym leader. First off we're going to do a little bit of exploring around this area, mainly just to get one item and just show some of the differences within the city. One of the biggest of which is that the Safari Zone is no longer open. Well, at least for Gen 2 anyways. Um, Supposedly, there's a thing about the owner of the Safari City being um, being abroad, so it's closed because of it. As you can see, there is no door to open into. Other than the side, Warden is traveling abroad, therefore the Safari Zone is closed. Anyways, before we take on the gym leader, once again, we're trying to get this little item over here, just a little small item, but at the same time, you see that there are two little ponds that you can go swimming or fishing in. That, of course, means some stats, people. Magikarp 100% all across the board when you are um, surfing while fishing. If it's an old wa old rod, once again, 100% all across the board is a Magikarp. Good rod, 9% chance Magikarp, 10% chance it's a Gyarados. And Super Rod, 70% 70, uh, 70 chance it's a Magikarp and only 30% chance it's a Gyarados. So essentially you're fishing for Magikarps and Gyarados, that's about it. The deal with this gym, really simple, is um, a little maze-like. You can see the little white dots on the ground. Those are essentially invisible walls that you can't go through. And every single person here looks like the gym leader, and you just gotta talk with them to see if they're the real one or not. Uh, they don't change up the order. You just, um, it's always gonna be the very last one at the very end. So potentially, if you wanted to skip every single trainer on the way to the gym leader, you could. You could just skip all of them right through straight to the gym leader, no problem. That, however, is boring. It's not 100%, and quite frankly, Pidgeot here has been lacking as far as levels go. So this, I figured, would be the chance for Pidgeot to go ahead and catch up on some levels. That does not come with some consequence in the small sense. I don't believe Pidgeot ever faints in any portion of this video. I don't believe. However, since we are in a gym that's of poison, paralysis, and you name it, uh, Pidgey, Pidgeot just gets just that, poisoned, paralyzed. So, of course, considering the fact that I don't have items to heal that, and I really don't want to waste any more of my full heals, you know, um, any, any of those, that, and since, you know, the you know, the Pokemon Center is just right outside the gym. You know, you're just going to see two cuts. One where I'm poisoned, just go to heal that. One where I'm paralyzed, I go to heal that. And just, you know, like I said, I cut it out because I try and cut out, you know, little tidbits like that every time I can. Unless I, you know, completely forget. In which case, I just say, screw it, you guys are just going to be watching it anyways. Anyways, what we're going against here, um... Again, this is more the poison gym, however, poison, you know, goes around multiple various other types, like a Nido Queen, and then later on a Nido King, being poison ground types, we went against the three forms of Bulbasaur, Ivasaur, Venusaur, being the grass poison types, but, um, not really, not difficult whatsoever as far as the trainers go. And again, since I'm really trying to get Pidgeot, you know, up in levels, not even having Pidgeot go against the Poison Ground types. Um, excuse me there. I just woke up not so long ago. And yes, I am going to be uploading this a little a day late. I completely forgot to go through and do the audio recording to get this up yesterday. So we'll be uploading this today as well as the new Budokai 2 part, because I know I've missed about a week and a half worth of uploading, but again, as I put down in my post, moving really sucks. <laughs> so, you know, took a lot of time out of, you know, my schedule. So Pidgeot's poisoned, you know, but other than that, being a flying type, you know, the ground, uh, you know, ground types aren't going to be any threat to us, to me, whatsoever. So, taking care of Licky Split. <clears throat> And one cut later, and here I am, continuing on. So, last regular trainer fight before we go against the actual deal. Another one that's not all that hard. Oh uh, boy, my video's lacking, like, freezing 
a lot, but then again, I got so many programs to open. But, oh well. It's the deal that happens sometimes. As long as it doesn't look any different. As long as it doesn't look any different in the final outcome of what you guys see, then there's really no problem with it whatsoever. But again, you know, a lot of these, you know, like most trainer fights, pretty simple. Boy, my video is going really slow. Oh, it's an Arbok. <laughs> oh man, what is causing it to go this slow? Boy, that's some. It is really lacking in mine. Oh well. Again, as long as it doesn't lack on your guys' end when it, the final part comes out, it doesn't really matter. But this is really annoying to watch. I think I might know. Hang on. Then again, I am doing this a little differently. I'm trying to watch it on Windows Movie Maker instead of making a, a side video of it. And this is just terrible. I really hope this doesn't screw up the audio any, but it just might actually. That kind of pisses me off. But at the same time, I'm just not really going to care because... Oh yeah, that really did screw it up. I'm already at like... 6 minutes 30 seconds of audio and I've only watched like 6 minutes 15 seconds of video. Oh well, it's just going to be screwed up. I'm just going to know in the future never to trust Windows Movies Maker to ever do anything right ever again, period. I swear this is Windows Movie Maker, you know, only for Pokemon Gold do I ever use Windows Movie Maker. Anyways, the real gym leader, Koga's own daughter, I believe it's uh, Jane, Janine? I don't know, I've never known how to pronounce her name, and I don't watch the anime, so no, I don't, n you know, never, you can just say I never knew. Anyways, Poison Type Gym, gym Leader, first we got ourselves a Crow, bad at level 36 with Wing Attack, Confuse Ray, Supersonic, and Screech. With, of course, the Supersonic being the one move that really... T but then again, Crobat's only attacking move is a wing attack, and that ain't gonna do all that much damage, and it'll be easy for me to avoid. Oh, not really, actually. Crobat's actually faster, so he'd hit the fly before I could use my fly to get away. So, phooey. Not <laughs> freezing again. Oh, well. Sorry, guys. At one point in time, this video was gonna lag a bit to where it's like about... 20 seconds off, and I'm not going to go out of my way to fix that because that's just ridiculous. And again, promise I only use Windows Movie Maker for the Pokemon parts because it's just so much easier. And once that's done with, I am never going back because Windows Movie Maker is terrible. I mean, I don't know why it feels the need to freeze when I'm trying to watch it, but whatever. I don't give two shits. Anyways, we got ourselves Weezing, both of them exactly the same at level 36, because she has two. Sludge Bomb, Smog, Toxic, and of course, the ever-popular Explosion. One of which you don't, I don't believe you actually get to see in this video, unfortunately. I do remember in the test playthrough, she did use it, and it sucked. That wasn't anything terrible. So with the second Weezing, because, you know, Pidgeot's at a bit of a disadvantage against against Weezing, because of the fact that there's no type in order to make it a little bit easier, so I just say, fuck it, Quagsire, Earthquake. And consider the fact that the last two that she has are both bug types, it makes it so much easier for Pidgeot just to smack him around a bit. I don't know. God, I can't believe this thing is going to be... Over 15 seconds off. Oh well. That's the nature of the business, I guess. Alright, Ariados, level 33. String Shot, Nightshade, Giga Drain, and Scary Face. Pretty good variety there of moves. You could easily get rid of the String Shot for something else. And the Scary Face, really. But Nightshade and Giga Drain, both good moves. Nightshade being one of those moves where the damage is based around the Pokemon the Pokemon's level. So in that case, it would be 33 damage every single time. Finally, a level 39 Venomoth. Toxic, Psychic, Foresight, and Supersonic. Again, pretty good type right there. Toxic being one of the most, you know, definitely one of the toughest moves to defend against because Toxic does 16, 1 16th of damage 
every turn constantly rising a 16th. So it would be 1 16th of your total health one time, and then it's an eighth of it the next time, then 3 16ths the next time, and it just keeps on going till where it becomes a one hit kill. And then of course Psychic, because Psychic is just that awesome. Anyways, that's going to do it for part 45, folks. Once again, I am very sorry that the, you know, fucking audio is going to be screwy, but that is out of my hands. See you next time.